What will the airports of the future be like? Well, we're going to find out today from our guest Paul Griffiths, Chief Executive of Dubai Airports. We won't need passports. Our biometric data will be captured from our irises. Plus, we'll be whisked from our home or office direct to the plane in driverless pods. And all this is coming sooner than you may think. Well, let's find out more. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to The Business Debate. Paul, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you, Sarah. It's a pleasure to be here. So what can we expect? What are the highlights? I think the thing is airport design needs to wake up and smell the coffee a bit and get into the 21st century. A lot of thinking around airport processes are for the convenience of the designers and the operators, not for the convenience of the customer. We're trying in Dubai to turn that on its head and design an airport from the ground up that uses the latest technology to speed people through airports and reduce their modal shift between ground and air. That's the objective. And why will we not need passports? Because there is technology now that's replacing paper documents with biometric tokens. And we need two things to happen. First of all, the maturity of the technology to be able to read those biometric signatures, whether they be fingerprints, vein structures, or facial recognition. And if we can do all of those different things and actually have a global agreed standard on whatever biometric token is used in the cloud, then actually people will be able to transit from country to country without needing any form of formal documentation. And how soon can we expect all this to happen? Because driverless pods sound like science fiction. Well, it's all happening now, actually. There's a lot of experimentation in automated passport gates, still reading a chip in a passport. But soon, those biometric tokens will be available, I think, across borders. A lot of countries are trialling that technology right now. And you're already using technology to shorten queues and reduce waiting times at Dubai's two airports. So tell me about that. Well, through necessity, because we had been developing the airport since 1960 and it's grown beyond all of the wildest dreams of where we've got to today, we had a problem and that was we didn't have the physical space to build more infrastructure but growth was still on the agenda. So we had to work out a way of getting double the number of people through the existing infrastructure and technology came to our rescue because we figured instead of building a brand new terminal building at vast cost to double our capacity, if we increased our flow rate by 100% and doubled the number of people through our terminals by the smart use of technology, we could double our capacity and improve customer service because most people want to spend less time at an airport, not more. And there are some advanced US airports who are doing this kind of thing, but is, say, 99% of airports of the world still doing it the old way? I think that's right. Unfortunately, all of the different processes in an airport are operated by different parties. And the result of that, unfortunately, is the passenger experience in most cases feels a bit like someone bumping a shopping trolley across some railway tracks. What we've got to do is change that whole plane of the viewpoint of how good customer service looks and try and get all of the parties involved to look at the customer-centric solutions on which we need to work collaboratively to produce a much, much better customer experience. And do you worry that making security quicker is making it less effective? No, quite the reverse actually, because I think new technology and new techniques are now enabling a far greater level of vigilance over customers and their bags. And we can now search and find out what people are carrying without actually having to do physical uh, inspections of luggage and customers. And I think that is actually uh, moving security on from what's been unchanged for many decades now. And why do all of these changes mean that you don't necessarily just need a bigger airport? Well, if you build a bigger airport, that has been the legacy solution to create more capacity through more concrete steel and glass. But the problem with that, a bigger airport is more foreboding, longer walking distances, more time taken up in the hassle of travel. 
We believe if you can focus technology at the solution, it's not only much, much cheaper, but it actually results in smaller airports handling larger numbers of people. And then we can disaggregate the processes and not have to bring everyone into a vast check-in hall and then circulate them across a vast airport. So there are many advantages from the technology approach. And won't all of this automation make travel more cold, more impersonal? No, I believe quite the reverse. What will happen is we will be able to manage the airport's customer journey for each individual passenger by the smart use of technology. And the need to actually differentiate the product to create a service experience that better for one class of passenger won't actually be needed in the future because the technology should make it possible for everyone. So it's not just for the few, for the first class passengers, it's for everyone is it? It is. It's designed to really take all of the hassle out of travel, leaving a core of actually just handing people back their time, the most valuable commodity when they're travelling. And I think people will value that more than any of the giveaways and the extra uh, facilities that we give just a small population of the travelling public. Really interesting. Paul, thanks very much. Thank you. And join us next time when we're going to be hearing from more global thought leaders. But for now, from me, Sarah Lockett at the London Stock Exchange Studios, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.